Thank you so much, uh, Christine, um, for your nice introduction. This is um, presentation is um, is an extension of what I presented uh, during fall 2022 professional development sessions. At that time, I was uh, working on just to be to begin with this idea and trying to make into uh, work. And over the course of several semester now, I, I do have some um, un better understanding about my perspective and how student brought it into uh, their learning uh, curve. So um, allow me to share the presentation. So today, um, I'd like to talk about semi-specific grading system. On During the fall 2022, I had this idea because I was working on different class or learning system um, that encourages me to work on um, how to motivate students uh, and, and then making sure that the students are happy with what they are doing in class and how I can be more helpful in their learning. And therefore, I, my expectation here was the overall, their learning will increase, they will be enthusiastic, enthusiastic about learning organic chemistry and their grade will better get better. Um, kind of, working in a smart, <laughs> more smarter than not harder. <laughs> and so that's why uh, the name is semi-specification grading system, because I, I just tweaked it from the traditional specification grading system. What is traditional specification grading system or what was my initial thought and idea about it? I've, I'll share it al along the way. Um, after fall 2022, uh, from fall 2022 to up to this uh, spring 2024, um, except the summer in between, uh, in between, I have implemented this grading system in my organic chemistry one and organic chemistry two. And, and you will see that um, the student have motivated to learn better uh, I do ha did have some survey, which I will share with you uh, at the end of this uh, presentation. I also will share with you the comparison of traditional grading system outcome and the specification or semi-specification grading outcome. And then, then at the end, I will um, um, I will ask you to give me some feedback. Um, or if you have any, find anything that I can do differently, I'll absolutely take it uh, to my heart and then work on it. Engagement in student um, learning comes actually co with from the students. And in the education or academia, there are a few theories are available as of now. And if we ask ourselves why I'll be doing certain work, absolutely, I need some something in return. What that return in a typical school or learning system or in a class is, uh, I'd like to see my grade better because this is how we measure our student success. So when a student learn, they kind of construct their knowledge. They, and it's not like we have to make them do, um, uh, do independently. Uh, no, I, I'm, I am absolutely not for that because I do not want students to uh, struggle on their own and then waste time and then come. Rather, I'll help them how to tie their shoes several times and then they will be able to do it on their own. And even though, they are not gonna able to do on their own. I'll I'll be with them. 
as long as they need, but that obviously that is we are in a 15 week system. So helping students it, it kind of motivate students to learn better. Students see that, hey, he or she, or she like looks like me, he or she approachable. Um, although people, uh, when she, <laughs> this funny thing, like when they come, oh, I thought that you look like this <laughs> because I'm teaching organic chemistry as if this is a foreign subject, but this is a extension of general chemistry in <laughs> one and two. Um, and then when we like to go to the activities, how we um, wanted to um, see our progress. And obviously there are a lot of biology involved, but I like to say that um, when I do something, I do because I value it. Um, I do because it gives me joy. It could be watching a movie with family members. It could be cooking something for them. This is my personal experience. And I, in my small world, this kind of give me a sense of enjoyment and fulfillment. Therefore, if I want a student to do something, uh, they will forget about, hey, there is a total loss of time with her. Or they will say, I didn't feel like that there is a this much time I was engaged in this activity and I really find uh, my, I can quantify my progress from, let's say I was not doing it at the beginning. Now I can, I, I'm getting better and I'm learning it. Other aspect of making a student engage is coming from independent, giving them independence Although we say that we don't want them to work independently at the beginning, but at the end, they can do it on their own and they will find value in those learning because that makes them checking, at least checking some box that I have learned some about this topic. So these uh, are the my takeaway from this student engagement theory. And I, although I'm not, since... I have uh, finished my undergraduate and master's degree back home where you where the traditional education system is after 12th grade, you go to college and you just ace in one subject area. That's how I uh, was my undergraduate degree and master's degree back home like about 20, 25 years ago. But therefore, I am also in a learning curve into how to learn and how to teach. And I think how to learn and how to teach is not going to be finished anytime soon, because if that's gone, then I, might, <laughs> I have zero creativity. So when I'm trying to teach students, I need to know that how the culture works in the school. Um, when I joined 2020, uh, 2015, I don't have any idea what a spell grant is, because I was always in a scholarship. I didn't have to worry about it that. I do not know that when you come, when you are at certain age, you can come to college because that's not the possibility back home. You try for medical school, which I did, and you didn't get chance because there are only 1,500 seats and out of 100,000 applicants, um, you are out. The dream of becoming a doctor is, is kind of evaporated right away. I didn't know that people can go for, hey, I was um, in an, a nurse now. I wanted to become an anesthesiologist. That's what my students are doing right now. I didn't know what is first generation means. Uh, and then I think hmm, as, as, as a first generation college student um, that I was, I, it, this realization came probably during the pandemic to me. My mom didn't go to school. My dad has some education, but for college education, I am the first generation college education. Open access out of the, no, that's not the back home. So you see that when I'm working in Nashville State, I am not um, making myself familiar with the so many um, vocabulary that these are my students. So I feel compelled and kind of um, 
you can tell moral obligation to make things better. And I, I and I, I and that's that is nothing wrong in doing so because um, I, I think we as a if we in my opinion the community college instructors teachers are the more human than other other place probably except the I have met except the K twelve. So I, I in what I am trying to imply here that the student body that we serve is not the regular people go to four year school. Typically, these are the people who has ups and downs. They don't know what that they're probably next meal coming from. So when they come to my class, when they come, uh, generally speaking, in community college, we try to make sure that they are served well. And in terms of service, I just need to make sure that how can they do better with little effort or little thinking or little imagination from me. So in order to keep them engaged, because in our chemistry classes are now three years, uh, three hours classes. And when they come to class, I, I, I tell them, hey, this is, don't think that this is a class you sit down and then you will go, actually you will be learning here. And I'm sure that you will not get the, these are in-person classes. So I'm sure that you can find resources in YouTube, which will make sure that you are swimming in Atlantic Ocean. You will not know which one is, is the best video. Um, you will not be motivated because you are just listening. And, and, and then if you don't know how to take notes and how to review those notes and how to prepare for tests, by, there is no, no one is gonna tell you that. So when you come class, you know that you are learning. You some you don't know what to ask, but someone is, else is asking questions. So that is helping you to learn. And the, um, typically, uh, the, this is the trick I play. That after um, so I, I I I call personally the best student I think in class. They can be helpful, and I say, hey, come here, tell everybody how you prepare for the test, because they hear generic information from me, and they kind of see the practical currently what someone else like them is doing. So it's kind of help them in terms of working on the. A project or lab or the how to prepare for the test or okay I didn't do well but next time I'll do good. So engaging students in class actually motivating students and when I when we wanted to engage them I think we need to do it more than motivating in class and that's when we like to make sure that the preparation is good. Um, they don't have test anxiety because um, they are coming class, taking notes, or they're taking help from the friends. They're coming to my office hours, and and I like to take it the the sticker away from that. The hey, you are coming, you are learning, and this kind of give them um a proper or at least some um confidence that they will do good. And I personally think that think that. When I think I'll do good, I'll I, I there is a greater, greater chance that I will do good. So when I was um in fall 2022, when I was um thinking about doing it, I, I did the presentation and then my um uh, my goal was to let's follow what is in the book, meaning this is not the kind of like a book book, this is the book. Uh, what other people followed regarding this, and and I I, I liked it because that those people didn't let the students go to the next topic or next assessment unless they got the um they got the mastery of those skills. So this is how I actually graded mine fall 2022 organic chemistry one i started with one class and that was um a fall 2022 organic chemistry one class after that um um i like to um emphasize the little bit more on the fact that why um little tweak in the grading is important um Yes, growth mindset, um, which kind of helps students to we need to make sure that no matter who they are, everybody can learn and everybody can 
grow um, if they wanted to learn. So I just need to make sure that the environment and supplementary information are there to motivate them. So first thing comes, say, I, I care about you. I care about you. I want you to do good. So let's, if you miss something, I'll work with you. Um, I don't want you to be worried about the test. And I just like to make sure that, uh, first of all, are you okay? Are you ready? Is there anything I can do? Do I need to connect you someone? Those interaction is actually what we every day do, but the specification grading is one component making sure that a student doing good while taking care of other things. So just like um, how a student answer a question, you can get many fold of information whether they know A, B, C, D because they answer these questions. Um, in that case, um, how students think that, or why students should think that they are, they should be following this. And obviously, um, when, as an instructor, when you put something in syllabus, students follow it. Uh, do, do, the, do, the, do they have questions? Yes, they do have questions. Hey, why we are doing that? Because this is not the typical grading system. And then the, the response from me is, you will know very much specifically where you are lacking. We are occupied with what I know at the first, but I am telling you, I we will figure out together what is lacking, and then we'll just fill up those gaps. After that, we'll be just fine because you will be successful by, by seeing your grade, and class is a family. So if you do, if you're successful, I am successful. Um, Yes, um, there are some um, uh, some <laughs> uh, personal opinion coming and personal uh, uh, some, what the way I look at things. This that's also you are hearing it. I also find value in doing this because in um, specification grading, I found that this align with our school vision of retaining students. Um, and 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 then making sure students are successful. Um, I had a chance to go with CBE training or, 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 or along that way. I also found that CBE is exactly doing same thing. You you finish those content, you you ace it, then the next module will be open for you, and you cannot go beyond that because. If you cannot handle this, you will not be handled that. So, and then what we are trying, we are kind of creating an environment where student can see their success um, is be better. In addition to that, we are, by simplifying this grading system, we are not sacrificing academic rigor, actually very difficult. You'll see very difficult for who? Um, very difficult if you are not managing your time properly. If you have um, lacking in your initial general chemistry one or two. Okay, now in this aspect, I like to emphasize the fact that it is recording. Students who are coming from um, online or hybrid class, but are still taking um, general chemistry, or organic chemistry one and and two, they are struggling. For example, students, some students took organic chemistry one and that they came lab and I asked them, um, make a water bath. Don't have any idea what is water bath is. Water bath is you take some water in a beaker and if it is hot water bath, you boil it. If it is cold water bath, you put it on ice, no idea. And I don't blame them because some of the things they learn in online, is kind of didn't didn't work for them. So now another question comes: Did the student did well in online class? No. So kind of that, that's kind of how uh, helped me to talk about uh, talk about those things because this um, uh, students who are coming to certain classes, their previous classes needed to be in certain format rather than whatever they want just because it fits in their schedule and it doesn't serve in the long run. Now, going back to this one, 
those type of student actually struggle here because continuous test um, is kind of, um, it, it is not for them. They, they cannot, uh, they, they, they struggle to survive. Does it mean that they fail? No, at the end, they, because the, the uh, grading comes with some of the retake opportunities or a lot of retake opportunities, they are able to recover some of those points or grade. So um, here you are looking at course um, outcomes. Uh, in every syllabus, we do have student course outcome. And I think if students read the syllabus well, they will know where the final exam questions coming from. This is what we put uh, questions. Uh, obviously, there are something is very specific, something is broad. And then students, um, at the end of time, we collect data for SAC COC. This, this, the, we collect data from the, for those informations. So I and I was working on during uh, fall 2022 um, for organic chemistry one, I did um, split those things into two categories. One is um, essential objectives, and another one a category is general objectives. And I tested the students on those objectives and separately. So rather than um, asking them, hey, read chapter one um, or read from this date lecture to this date lecture to take a test or chapter one, two, three together, I kind of give them small chunk of test and high end, and just to pinpoint higher ex, which ex, exactly they are lacking about and they can overcome those by getting help from me um or in the group study because everybody has their own group nowadays I, um as they are one and i encourage students to study in a group so um to compare this um, I uh, this is the comparison, like typically point-based system that was, um, we do have three to four exams, um, and then these exams carry 33% in organic chemistry. I also put that percentage here just to make sure it's comparison, but I did not use that percentage while I was doing it on fall 2022. Typical point-based system, there is no repetition, but I like I put the students, I asked the student, hey, if you can not get 80%, you are allowed to repeat that. Um and and, and they did that. Uh, did it cause me so much time and anxiety for my end? Um, not exactly because I use the office hours to work with them. Um in point-based systems, um, we have class quiz. And, and then here, the, uh, the uh, parallel of that class quiz was objectives, general objectives, quizzes, or test. Every student, the homework we do in publisher's platform for us, it is Magra Hill Connect. So students do the homework. Students also have lab and lab uh, final, all of them are uh, one attempt um, in, and then they have the final exam. So this is kind of like a comparison. If I kind of summarize it, what is the difference here? Difference here is student taking a lot of test or quiz instead of three exam or four exams. Um, again, um, since I was uh, following the book or somebody um, have done and got success, I was just following them. So I, my grading system was um, about how many general objective and essential objective students are, uh, are completing. Uh, and then based on that, um, what I thought would be um, appropriate, I, I, I put a grading standard for them um, for a... B and C. Um, now here um, for the lab, I like to mention that um, for lab, student does the work in the lab and then they submit the lab notebook. 
um, when I grade the lab, I do not um, necessarily focusing on how much the yield. I work, I focus on some criteria of lab book writing because if these kiddos goes to um, actual research lab, they have to have a systematic way of knowing how to write down the lab work. Um, so what I did that students, uh, sub, uh, I have a rubric I've sub submitted in, I mean, I posted in D2L, student worked on those, uh, followed that, but it's still lacking. A lot of things that, the, the, uh, for example, if it is table, some chemicals name are missing. So I have to, in assignment Dropbox, when they submitted, I put them, hey, in your lab, table of chemical incomplete, I'm not seeing explanation of your results, see sources of error. So if you could submit that, I will grade it again. So uh, in, in, in shortcut, for lab grading, I absolutely followed the tilt approach. Uh, they have a rubric, they know, did it, even though they didn't, um, um, didn't work it up, um, the way I, I expect, I give them a chance because that's the second chance is the chance under the grading system. So I, I followed that uh, along the way. Now, fall 2022, um, I had, um, I was in a schedule, but Rafi wasn't teaching the night class and that was hybrid. So I, I, I actually taught both classes and I thought that, okay, I'm gonna, even though that is hybrid, I'll put, put this grading in both class. Then I found out that I do have some barrier in putting that. So, which was not bad. I, 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 now I have a way of comparing my result on student final exam statistics and the class exam statistics side by side. And as you see that with specification grading, and this is interesting to me, uh, because the class average, final exam average. Um, obviously, there is some low point and high point, but I, I, I focus on the average, and that kind of tells me um, that, that the, the progression, how much they have learned in this class. So on the left side with the specification grading, and then right side is the traditional grading. Higher student had feedback on lab writing, but they didn't have second chance on exams. Um, they didn't have second, they had second ch chance on quiz because in the D2L we had set this set up, but most importantly, they had class test of three to four chapters per test. After three, third week or fourth weeks, it has started. So once they finish three chapters, they have a test, another three chapters, they have a test, or another three chapters, another test, and then last probably four chapters, they had four tests. So when I looked into this, and which is mimicking or parallel to the essential objectives, the average increased. The left-hand side students, they had at least two chance to correct their mistake, and then that also reflected in the final exam. Final exam was, as you all know, is a comprehensive exam. And you see that the shift of numbers when they have chance, chances to take care of, uh, fill up the gaps in their initial learning and how that is reflected in the final exam. So this is specification grading and Application grading in fall. Now, with the, can you hear me? Okay, because it says my internet is unstable. <laughs> so, with the specification grading, is it all flowers? No, there are some tranches too. Because I'm new there, I have to admit that I'm also learning. I don't no certain things, so I still have to fill up those gaps. I Again, I have to listen to my students. So some of the students was kind enough saying that, hey, um, and I asked them, how can I make it better? And then they said, 
uh, rather than having so many little testers, I think you can make like one or you can connect one essential and two together so that it still will get feedback, but it will probably save more time. And I actually um, thought that, hey, I don't have to do everything by my own and I will claim it mine, actually. That is semi specification. So I altered some of the things that I thought initially were working for me. But for community college, we have to understand that students comes from a core path of life and different path of from of learning. And even though uh, I think as a community college instructor, we always think that everybody has life and that life has ups and downs. So somebody is just good now, somebody can be not good next day and I have to work with them. I, I think that, again, I, I felt like that is kind of moral obligation probably from my own personal experience and also. So I wanted to make sure that it makes it a little bit more easier next term. And I found that uh, actually uh, I can to do that by making sure that um, I can eliminate the class quizzes because I, I, I also lose time in from the lecture, so many tests, like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and they are coming for three hours. In the middle of the class, definitely I give, give 10 minutes break, which a student asks for actually more. But I found that if I, I don't want to derail, but if I leave three hours, 10 minutes for 14 days, I'm losing 140 minutes from a three hours class, but that is listed as a instructional time. So I cannot justify more than that. I don't give them more than one break. What I did was, um, and then I, I, I have to um, shout out for uh, Gracie because she <laughs> implanted me that you should have a little bit more rigorous um, exam. So in following semester, I took, um, give them exams per chapter based on those essential and, um, um, and, and general objectives. In, in order to make things easier, I actually did not let the students know that these are essential, these are uh, general objective. Rather, I said, hey, this is our chapter one test and I don't call it quiz, this is really a test. Now I have test for each chapter. In our, addition to that, and because these students will be taking MCAT, rigorous test, at that time, it, some school is still take PCAT, some school, and they are, they are going to do DAT test. Some students are going to take uh, GRE or so. So I thought that um, it needs to be a little bit rigorous somewhere in the middle of the semester. Now I have a test called midterm, which covers uh, first four chapters. And that is a catch too, because this is a rigorous, to make it, keep it rigorous or make it rigorous in my own opinion, I, I uh, th there is no second chance of the midterm. Just like the final. Final don't have, what I have found that high end student does the midterm test, they also have seed planted in head that final exam will be this type of rigorousness. In addition to that, a little bit more because it will be comprehensive every chapter is coming. So that helps the mindset that um, this is gonna be like this until the end of the semester. But chapter test, I work with the student. Um, they have two uh, repeat, uh, two attempts total, first and second, uh, and then they do that. Now, I have to admit that one student, um, she or he had learning um, uh, disabilities or so, th things like that, I had to give that student more than two attempts. Should I be not doing that? I, I think I should. Um, it doesn't cost me anything, rather those students, but that every time I make the retake, this is all new set of tests. This is not something new, something they have seen, definitely the same concept we are talking about. So what that encourages students to go back and fill those gaps 
that I don't know this concept yet. So what should I do? All I need to do focus on this one. And that's not, doesn't cost them so much time actually. Obviously, when I'm a student, I'm anxious because I need to do good. So that that I brought that change and this is what I see for organic chemistry too in spring 2023. Now, just as a reminder, fall 2022, um, I, I didn't have organic chemistry too because I started with organic chemistry one. Uh, the midterm statistics, uh, again, I'll be focusing on the average because that's, again, in my opinion, it helps me to see how overall students are doing. Final exam average is this much. And now this is not a good, uh, obviously, in my opinion, but in, in a later one, you have an example on before pre-pandemic. I did not bring any example from the pandemic because those, I don't know, because students are at the home. So I don't think that's kind of not so appealing to me, but I'll show you that before pandemic, what was the exam statistics for the final exam. Now, students who take organic chemistry two and do well, they also did well in organic chemistry one. Student organic chemistry one who did really well, not always they do good in organic chemistry too. And the reason is there is no new sort of learning in organic two in terms of knowing reactions, organic chemistry based on addition, elimination, substitution, um, um, rearrangement reactions. What organic chemistry does, and this is all synthesis, you have to be quick, you have to know where the electrophile and nucleophile uh, goes, uh, nucleophile goes, so things need to be changed. I also uh, did one as is um, college-wide statistics um, strategic planning. Uh, my goal was to make new tests. So I eliminated all the multiple choice things because I I, I have seen in through my own eyes that a student did decent grade, but doesn't know how to draw certain structure. And then I, I feel extremely bad. So the, uh, the, these, Final exam now is not multiple choice. It used to be multiple choice. Now they have 70% multiple choice and 30% written. And that's how the midterm and the class question comes. Not, not, they, these are not multiple choice. They still have to write the mechanism, draw the mechanism, name them, analyze them, or give reasons why things work and how things work. Now, we are now in organic chemistry one in spring 2023, second semester. Um, average, 81%. Final exam, 75. And I think most of the things came that, that the, the students are not are doing so many quizzes or tests, rather it's kind of confined. So it's kind of give them more time and me to in, be in, present in class. Now, as I said, there is one example of pre-pandemic. Um, this is organic chemistry one spring 2019. Uh, you can clearly see the shift of numbers. And by doing so, a, this specification grading, students have chance to earn better grade. And I'm gonna say earn because students really earn the grade. This is not something uh, we do <laughs> reward them. No, absolutely not. Uh, and I, I came from a culture that holding you back is a credit. So I don't want to do that thing or have that, let this thing happen to my student. I asked my teacher, why did I get 16 in this out of uh, 12 in this exam uh, uh, portions because I answered everything. He graciously said that I have to keep some points in my pockets. Well, um, I'm not doing that. I do have more pockets now because in Bangladesh, I wasn't putting pants. <laughs> I wasn't putting like a, this attire. That's what I meant. <laughs> so I am not, my my pockets are really full with the um, uh, gratitude from the students, not with the points. Um, now, um, in fall 2023, 
I have organic chemistry two class and I see that the students did really good in the midterm, but final exam, again, comprehensive, not so great. So students, when they do individually, does it reflect they will do good? Sometimes, sometimes not. There are a lot of other factors can be involved. Um, do I need to find it? Absolutely. But do I have that skill yet? No, I don't have that skill yet, but I think I can, I can learn it. I can. Um, this is organic chemistry, um, uh, 2023 organic chemistry two, and there is a comparison here where you see that average. Um, so class average basically not so great uh, for organic chemistry, final exam, two final exam, but uh, you will see that it's much better than traditional grading system. It is good in organic chemistry one. Um, Okay, so this is the spring 2024 of this current semester. What I also found that when, uh, before the spring 2024, my attitude and student attitude is um, I didn't get 95, so I should go retake. Obviously, you can do retake if you get less than uh 80 uh, at, uh, now, but at that point, if you want to increase your grade, go do that. So they, they used to do that. Now I kind of cap it. The reason is students stay occupied with that doing retakes and when we need to move forward, they are, uh, they are not mentally moving forward. So I said that um, I will count your grade through the percentage. I don't mind in doing that, but you must be earning, uh, you retake is not going to more than 85%. So they just, not everybody is now interested to do that. So when you do retake, student can now do the retake still, but their total points um, is not going to be earning 85%. I don't want you to confuse it because after all this uh, route, I found that student understand when they see the percentage and see the numbers. So I, I now kind of uh, not going traditional grading system, but I'm counting them traditionally in the points-based system, but it's not exact, it's not the point-based system. So the current midterm average is 65, a little more than 65, and then organic chemistry two is 68. Now you see that sometimes you see 0% because somebody didn't show up to the test. And I got the email after 15 days from the testing center. A test for Did I freeze or did Jasmine freeze? I think it's Jasmine. Is Jasmine frozen? Okay, yes. so we'll wait just a second and see her. She'll probably join back in just a minute. I was showing you the comparison of organic chemistry one and two, and I was mentioning that I always work with the student, but I don't want to set the precedence that they can take test at any time. Um, so that, that's my, my defense. <laughs> now, what we are seeing, uh, what I am observing overall, that students are really doing good. How do we motivate them to find um, how to improve their learning? I, I think it is also important to let them know that find out what I'm not good at yet, but you will be good at soon because uh, you will work and I will work with you. So um, this um, individual mindset 
helps students to overcome all the um, emotion comes with this class. And I think I am seeing that students are doing good in those classes because of these retake opportunities and how uh, I'm grading the class, how I am giving them feedback. To set the tone on that area, um, I I just like to um, share with you, let me put it in, okay. Share with you the survey that I have set up um, in, in these semesters. I, I, I ask them if retake opportunities is helpful and students said yes, 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 and then um, yes, this is organic chemistry one. And my computer says, okay, let me go back again. I, I'm having a little technical difficulty. Okay. And then there, uh, that, on that survey, there was 15 questions. And I specifically ask them if they are going, they are learning the course objective. So was the lecture portion, uh, the, 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 it will be what, the way, the way lecture portion was graded, helped my understanding on the principle of atomic structure, molecular geometry, et cetera. The, all eight students said yes. Here, the grading system is helping, one said no. So uh, the, uh, the mistake that I made, I think I should be putting a question that if it doesn't meet your expectation, what that is. Uh, then I also asked them um, all of these category. Uh, they are out of, uh, there are 15 students, but 80 students participated. For some of the course objective, um, seven said yes, one said no, some, all of them said yes. Now, uh, this is the good part in this one. As a result of my effort, my enthusiasm increased. Seven said yes, one said no. Again, I will recommend it. This class, seven said yes, one said no. And in organic chemistry, uh, this is what that retake opportunity is helpful. Why or why not? The student said, uh, every, there are five students participated. One said, no, it puts too much pressure in the class. You rather give me, the, uh, um, correct me the answers and credit back. Uh, in that, I have to tell that I tried that in the past and I didn't see progress. So should I be doing it even though the student is telling me? Maybe not because I, I want them to learn. Um, and I don't think this is going to help them from my previous experience. This is our G2. Um, the student um, was telling that in some area, overall the grading system helping them, but some of the course um, objective that I ask specifically if they are happy with their grading system, Five, some areas, five, all five said yes, some area, four said yes, and one said uh, no. Um, so in, in summary, I, I, what I just like to <laughs> um, repeat that I am seeing students are learning and that learning rewarding them the grade they are getting at the end of the course that learning will be helpful for their next standardized test. Um, and, and I think uh, it's so funny. I just, hey, on this because you may need to teach your own kid. So probably to help other people to learn this. I collaborated on this topic with a faculty at a four-year institution and, I, and the result was presented Fall 2023, American Chemical Society's um, fall meeting at San Diego, uh, California. And these are my references where I got this information about the theory and other stuff, uh, the blue book that I copied for my 
very initial attempt. Question for me. So Fawn had a question earlier, so I'm going to go to her first. Yeah, I was just wondering, Jasmine, if um, do you have students in organic chemistry one that are like first year students, or are these all students who've been in college a while? Okay, so very good. Um, because we have some students come to Nashville State um, to do the career change, there are some students who are uh, who I are college previously. I tried something like this. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Jasmine, this is John. Yes. I'm uh, real interested to know um, how the students reacted to the more tests. Um, and uh, did, did you think that that really helped them uh, to understand the material versus having a test over three chapters or a test over every chapter as you go along? How do you see that? Um. So fall, I think it's kind of like the perspective. Like every student comes with different need. Somebody needs D, somebody needs C because they are for whatever reason. But I, I also see that when majority of the students come for uh, one common goal, then that's translating the class um, overall. So going to your questions, I have seen fall 2022 enthusiasm. And then the initial, they said it is interesting. And then, but at the end, they said that the grading systems really, I think I did have a, um, so in my evaluation, they said that the great, uh, there was 10 students and five students responded to this evaluation. And one comment was the grading systems really helped me to learn uh, in this class. So if I value that, I also need to value of like, there are so many tests you need to give me back. Then I have to weigh like which one is beneficial for the long-term mm -hmm. learning. Mm -hmm. And and in that case, I would say that that's, I'm not excluding the negative one, not because it is negative, but I'm excluding negative one because I have found that they will get a better grade in the class test or so, or chapter test or a quiz, but overall in the final exam, they they will not. And those students, I have found that they, when they see their, their class average and if they get 50 or 60 in the final exam, they will get A, B, C, whatever. Then they stop actually learning. And they stop mm -hmm. putting enough effort for the class. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I just, uh, we have, Four minutes uh, to 10. Um, I have put into the chat a request for feedback about Jasmine's session here today. Um, and as we wrap up here, I just want to remind you that we have 